Hey guys, uh, checking out our latest cool fork from Luna. This is uh, probably one of the nicest fat forks we've seen for the Saunders. It's an air oil fork similar to the Bluto. It's got a remote lockout. It fits the 4.9 inch tire in between the crown. And of course, being air oil, you can fill it up right here with your shock pump. And what we're going to do is kind of show this off and show you how to install it on a Saunders. So for right now, I'm going to set it aside. We'll start taking apart the Saunders that we've got. First thing I'm going to do is take off the caliper. Just get the brakes out of the way and then we'll take off the wheel. And <laughs> and since we're going to be swapping forks, the Saunders fork has a cable guide right here that the sheath needs to route through and in order to get it through there you're gonna have to loosen the cable from the caliper so you'll loosen this bolt down here and once you have it loose this this bolt also is gonna have to be unscrewed well actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this end cap off so just gonna use a pair of pliers and Undo the crimp, hopefully. Pull that cap off. And then we'll just pull the sheath through. And then we can finish removing the, uh, the rotor, or sorry, the caliper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off. I already know that on the new fork, it's going to be a post mount instead of a standard mount. So I'm just going to pull these two bolts. Okay, so we'll set this aside. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is take the wheel off just to make it a little easier on myself. That way when you go to take the fork off, you don't have the extra weight of the wheel. Save that for later. All right, next thing we're gonna do is take the stem off. So I'm gonna start by loosening these two that clamp onto the fork stem. And we'll undo the top bolt. Once you undo this top bolt, nothing's gonna be holding it down since these aren't clamping on anymore. So don't let your fork just drop to the ground. Gonna hang these right here for a minute. Pull the shims off. So 
So I lied, there is actually something holding it. There's a O-ring inside this lower spacer that kind of creates traction on this. It keeps it from sliding out. So you'll have to slide that out of there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these bearings off. We're gonna set them aside. And then we gotta remove this lower race so that we can put it on the new fork before we install the new fork. And to do that, we're gonna pull this little plastic gasket off there. And then we gotta get something underneath there to pry this up and off so we can reuse it. So I'm gonna take this over to the workbench and we'll remove that and then we'll come back over here. Okay, so now we're on the workbench. What we did is we sharpened a flathead screwdriver and we're gonna use that to start prying this uh, lower race off. kind of gently work my way around, try not to damage it as much as possible. Want to be able to reuse it. And we got lucky, that one was fairly easy. Sometimes they're a little tougher, but now that we got this, we can start putting the other fork back on. Cool. Okay, so now we got our lower race ready to go. So you're just gonna slide that back on the new fork. And we're gonna use a mallet to try and tap it down lightly on, around the edges of it. And I'm putting the fork down on a rubber pad so that I don't damage the bottom of the fork as we do this. Just keep working your way around so that you're knocking it down evenly so it doesn't get jammed on there. All right, I don't like this method, Santiago. <laughs> All right, so now we're back over the bike. We got our lower race. We're gonna put it on the new fork. Just gonna slide it on there and then at the bottom of the fork where it hits that taper, it's gonna stop. So then we gotta tap it the rest of the way on. So what we're gonna do is, got it on the rubber mat so we don't damage the bottom of the fork. And we got our wooden mallet and I'm gonna carefully hit the very lower lip of this race. Just work my way around so that I don't damage the race. And between the rubber mat and the, the suspension in the fork, you're gonna have to do a little extra work because it's fork is compressing and the mat's compressing. Hopefully the shop guys don't find out that I ruined this wooden dowel doing this. Pretty sure this is one of their specialty tools. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay, we're back at the bike. We've got our little race that we took off the stock fork and we're gonna install it on the new fork. So you're just gonna slide it down there until it hits the taper. Once it gets to the taper, you're gonna have to tap it the rest of the way on. So what we're gonna do is we're putting the fork down on a rubber mat to protect the bottom. We're gonna use a steel punch and we're just gonna hit this lowermost edge of the lower race. And I'm just going to gently work myself around the uh, fork so that I can tap it down evenly so that we don't get it stuck and so we don't bend the race. Thank you. 
if you've got a piece of pipe that sits on there nicely without damaging the uh, part that the bearing runs on, you could use that and that would be even easier. But just to show you that you can do it with something simple like a punch and a hammer, we'll just do this method. I'll try not to talk too much through this part so we can just fast forward. You don't have to watch me tapping on this for five minutes. Next time I gotta put my phone on silent. Oh, a little bit more, we're almost there. This is a Harbor Freight Punch. I guess they are two piece. Just a little bit more. That sounded good. Yeah, that's a little frustrating. Hopefully your punch doesn't come apart. All right, we're on there. Okay, so now we can move on with the rest of the fun stuff. So you're gonna to wanna to put your lower bearing back on. There's also the lower uh, plastic spacer. Hi. Hi, Mom. So now that we've got that lower bearing, uh, sorry, lower race tapped all the way on, nice and flat against the fork, we're gonna go ahead and put the rest of the components back on there. So the first thing is gonna be that little lower cap that we took off. Just wanna make sure that sits down over the base. We're gonna put our bearing on. And then we can feed it up through the head tube. Make sure you don't lose any of the parts that were uh, on your bike to begin with. So once you've got that up in there, we can put this lower spacer on, which has the O-ring in it, and it'll kind of hold the fork up in place for us. And you can see it's not gonna do the job by itself, so don't let that fall out. And put our spacers back on. We 
We're going to put our stem back on. And as you can see, the new fork stem is a little bit longer on this one. When you buy them for the Saunders, they're going to be cut to the stock length to fit the normal Saunders spacers. This bike has already had the spacers changed and they requested that we just put a extra spacer on there for them. So we're just going to go ahead and put that extra spacer on. And then we can put our top cap on. Gonna snug down the headset, make sure it moves free, but not too tight, not too loose. Oh, and I can see I see I have play in there, so I need a little more spacer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off one of the small spacers and I'm going to add two of the larger spacers. So don't make it too tight, you want it kind of so that it's not floppy loose in there and you shouldn't feel any play and then you can snug down the clamp bolts. But I'm going to wait till we get the wheel on so I can make it easier on myself to get it straight. So the next step is going to be mounting the wheel. The stock Saunders uses these uh, washers that have a little bent end on them that hook into a loop on the bottom of the fork. The new fork doesn't have that, so what we're gonna do is just aim that fork, or that loop, the bend, rather, towards the slot in the dropout. We're just going to snug down the axle bolts. The new fork has a nice little recess for the, for the nuts to go down into. So it's not easy for it to come out of the dropout unless you loosen them up. And then we got to put our caliper back on. And as I mentioned earlier, oh, I'll show this to you. This one has the post style instead of the standard style. So we don't need the uh, caliper spacer that came on the caliper.
This is our first install, so hopefully the, this is the right spacing. We'll find out in just a second. Yes, that will work. I'm not going to tighten this down all the way yet. I want to get the uh, cable hooked up so that I can get it centered on the rotor properly before we tighten it down all the way. So I'm just kind of get it snug. Get it close. All right. So the old fork had that built on loop. The new one has this little catch right here that you can feed your cable through. So hopefully I have an Allen that fits that. So you'll just loosen this guy up. Hopefully you guys can see that. Feed your cable through there and snug it back down. And we're just going to feed this back through the caliper. Want to make sure that you get the uh, sheath seated up in the lever again. Otherwise things aren't going to work right. I'm going to put a little bit of tension on the arm before I tighten it down. On this bike, I can see the clean spot on the, on the uh, cable, so I have an idea of where to clamp it down. See what that feels like. Yeah, not bad. Okay, so now that I got that tight, we can go ahead and tighten the caliper itself down. So what I'm gonna do, just for a quick, is pull the lever so that it's clamped onto the rotor. And then we'll just tighten these down and that should get us into the ballpark. So we got a little bit of rubbing, but it's even all the way around, good enough to test ride it. We can adjust that better later. Now that we've got that on there, we can go ahead and uh, line everything up, make sure it's all straight. We'll tighten down the stem clamps. So you just get these guys. those and then the last thing we have to do is this fork comes with a remote lockout so what we're going to do is we're going to install a little lever up here on the handlebars that'll lock out the forks and where did I put my lever
Might have to cut that part, Josh. <laughs> so last step for installing the uh, fork is gonna be this remote lockout. So basically we're just gonna mount this on the handlebars and then hook it up to this side of the fork. You just take that bolt out, and then this guy can pull open. Oh, no, that's not how it works. I take that back. Let's start that over. Okay, so the last thing we've got here is the remote lockout for the fork. We just have to install it on the bar, and then hook it up to the fork right over here. So it has this aluminum clamp that you're going to have to slide over the bar, so we're going to have to take the grip off to get it on there. And you can put it, you know, wherever it's you prefer to have it on your bike, but for demo sake, we're just gonna move it, take the grip off and pull the, uh, slide the new lockout lever on and then put the grip back on just so you get the idea of how it works. Luckily this grip is the type that unscrews instead of uh, being glued on there. So we're gonna slide the lever over the bar. And that should be good right about there. Normally you want, might want to put it over here, but just to show you guys quicker how to get it working. Okay, once you've got it mounted on the bar, and all you gotta do is route your cable, and you're just gonna feed it through here. And if it snags at all, just wiggle it until it goes through. Should just feed straight through there, and then we'll tighten it with the set screw right here. If it doesn't go through, then try checking the set screw, make sure it's not tight already. So I'm just gonna back this off a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Make sure you got your end pressed in all the way on both sides. You wanna check the top and the bottom. So make sure that this is seated. Make sure that this one is also seated and then tighten down your set screw. And now we should be able to lock it out. So. No, oh, I take that back. See, got to pay attention to the lever too. The lever was down. Lever needs to be up when we tighten it. So I'm going to loosen that up again. Pull the cable tight. And then tighten it down. So now we should be able to do Snap that into place and you'll see that the lever moves when we do that, or that the cable moves. So now everything is working. So now if we take it down off the stand, you can see that normally we can compress the forks. And if you hit the lockout, you get nothing. They're rigid. You hit the release, which is the little blue button, and we have forks again. And there you go. Now you have a Saunders with uh, Bluto style forks, ready to go do some off-road. Thanks guys.